I'm Bill Hansen and I work as a biologist for Next Air Energy and we're involved in lots of fish and wildlife studies around the 30 hydro reservoirs that we operate here in Maine. One of the studies that uh, I'm involved in involves work with bald eagles that nest and uh, live out around our hydro reservoirs. And it's part of our license requirement to monitor and keep track of the nesting activity and productivity of these eagles out around these lakes. I'm Kyle Murphy. I work with uh, Bill Hansen as a biologist for Next Air Energy. One project that we, we work together on a lot is the, uh, the, the eagle banding and monitoring programs that we have. The goal of this, this study in, in is to um, monitor mercury levels um, and that, that has actually been um, pretty successful. We've got a lot of samples in the database now. Rigging up to uh, climb the eagle tree and it's just standard uh, tree climbing gear and I'll use a combination of lanyards and, uh, and my tree hooks to go up and get the eagles. To sample these birds, we need to climb the tree and get the chicks. And we want the chicks at around six weeks of age. Fortunately, here in Maine, uh, probably 95 or 99 percent of all of our eagles prefer to nest in large, solid, tall white pine trees. And from a climbing standpoint, that's really a preferred tree. It's, it's safe, it's easy. I'd cautiously approach the chicks so that you don't startle them. The only real risk is that the chicks would be startled and possibly tumble out of the nest or, or fall. Probably one of my favorite tools is, is my little eagle hook. It's just an extended piece of wire that I can reach out and, and sort of hook around their leg. female. Huh? Just tuck those wings in. Get that out of the way. So we gently put them in a nice soft canvas bag and lower them down to the ground to be worked up. Once we bring the birds down, they're actually quite passive, and once they've been handled a little bit, they'll just sit there. They don't really try to run away. We, uh, we like to make them comfortable. We take them out of the bag and just plop them on the ground beside us while we're working one of the other ones up. Basically take some uh, physical measurements, bill measurements, and this is just to help us with health and age and size. Take a uh, feather growth measurement. Side you want. Ah, this one's fine. And what we look at here is, you can see how these are growing in and they have a sheath to them. They start all inside the sheath and they grow out just like, uh, just like corn, really. And, and some of this we can correlate males and females. You can see how much bigger she is. She's definitely the female in the group. The primary thing that we're looking for is mercury levels. It's, it's an environmental five. toxin. Maine has more than its share of mercury out in the landscape. And eagles are an excellent bioindicator for mercury levels because they're at the top of the food chain. They eat lots of other things. We basically take two different tissues, feathers, which would uh, tell how much mercury has uh, come out of their body, basically how much they were born with from the female, a little bit from diet. This guy's been eating fish out here for six weeks and that'll get deposited in the tips of the feathers 
and then we also take a blood sample. There you go, perfect. Right there. In addition to the blood samples, every bird that we handle That's gets that. both a state That's band cool. and a federal band. What's been really helpful is with the use of the color bands. We've gotten um, a lot of reports from other states and observations where these have been these uh, juvenile birds now, now parts. adults, um, have been observed. But they're, they're definitely not stressed, which is really, I think that's one of the neater things about them. They're probably the perfect bird to show people to and come out with you. I think this thing's going to take a nap. The, after that data is collected, the, we put the bird back into the, the canvas bag and send it back up to Bill, uh, where he, which he can places back into the nest. Eagles in Maine are actually doing, doing very well. They've made a huge comeback. In the late 60s, early 70s, we were down to only about 19 nests in the entire state of Maine. And we're probably approaching over a thousand nests at this point. Probably the average tree is anywhere from 70 to 100 feet and eagles like to have a nice vantage point, so they tend to pick the tallest tree in the group or the tallest tree along the shoreline. Everybody wonders what the parents are gonna do when we start to climb up the tree, and the short and sweet answer is they actually do nothing, they just leave. They circle the nest a few times, and then they go and sit in a nearby tree and watch you kidnap the kids. It also, people wonder, with us going up and handling the birds, if the adults are gonna come back to them. Uh, that's actually a bit of a wives' tale with many birds. If, if you rile the adults up a lot, there's a chance they wouldn't come back. But with eagles, they're typically landing back in the nest before I even get down out of the tree. I do have an opportunity to take a lot of people out with me. It's, it's a very... It's probably an ideal thing to take either some school kids or other people out to see this because the young birds don't really get stressed at all. They're, they're very content sitting on the ground, being watched and even handled. And uh, it's just a real treat for people to get to hold a, a baby eagle. You can turn them into instant eagle lovers on the spot. Another interesting project that I'm working on is actually using cameras in eagle nests. And this has turned out to be a really, really popular project. And the reason that we're doing this is that we're actually required as part of our licenses to have an eagle plan. That's one of the many things that we have to do. And part of that eagle plan involves public outreach and public education. And to, to fill that niche, we actually put these webcams on eagle nests, and it's just a great opportunity for the general public to be able to get the bird's eye view of these nesting eagles. So Bill, this is a little bit more overhead, right? There we go. You're live. Wow, that looks awesome, Bill. Um, Biodiversity Research Institute's a, a nonprofit wildlife research group. Uh, next, Sarah and Aaron Energy and Bill Hansen have helped us uh, on a lot of different projects. We, we work with them to uh, basically monitor wildlife um, in areas where they are working. Some of the eagle studies that we do, we can look at what these eagles are eating, um, how long they're spending at the nest, get a good sense of the, the timing of the year, when they're laying eggs, um, and what their activities are. We actually, again, partner with Maine Fish and Wildlife U.S. Fish and Wildlife and Biodiversity Research Institute. And we actually post our Eagle Cam info on their website. And it's posted there as the Next Era Eagle Cam. They get an amazing number of hits. Some of these websites will, will be getting millions of hits in a day. Part of the partnership studies is that while we have these birds in hand, in the last couple of years we've been taking the opportunity to attach backpack satellite transmitters on the backs of some of these eagle chicks. 
because we really want to know where these chicks disperse to. When we're going to put a satellite unit on, we wait until the bird is much older. We prefer to get the bird at almost 10 weeks old, right before they fly, and that way we know that that bird is full size. That's as big as that bird is going to be. Got one. Well, I mean, I guess we can go out tonight. The kids are gone. <laughs> they left. The, uh, the backpack unit sits on their back a lot like a little small backpack that you would wear with a little harness that comes around the wings and it's crossed in the front and riveted on with brass rivets. It's lightweight, it only weighs about 80 grams, so, so they don't notice the weight at all. It has a small solar panel on it that will recharge the batteries when they're perched, so it's very high tech. This backpack ends up being worn for the rest of their life. There's really no way to recover this bird and take the backpack off, but they do not seem to bother the bird. What we're doing now is just getting it to wiggle that in around the feathers a little and readjust it. Every day or two it will transmit a signal from that unit up to an Argo satellite and beam that position back to us so we know exactly where that bird is every few days. We've had birds that will go from Moosehead Lake as a chick and leave in the fall and go all the way to the Great Lakes for the winter uh, and then come back to Moosehead the following summer and do this for repeated years so they definitely are on the move. There's no one spot that eagles go to. They're very random and, and they move huge distances. The, uh, the bald eagles nationwide have actually been delisted as an endangered species, but the reality is they are still are fully protected with all the same protections on the birds and their habitat and they're protected under the, the Bald Eagle and Golden Eagle Protection Act. Probably from my standpoint, it's, I would say the eagle work is some of the favorite work that I do. It's, it's a real treat to be able to be allowed to climb these trees and handle these birds up in the nest. And uh, they always nest in these impressive settings with a view out across the remote lake in northern Maine. And uh, the, the, the scenery is tough to beat. They're just a great species to work with. They're, they're passive, but yet they're large and impressive. So it, it's a unique mix.